I got some ideas that I wrote down. Um, just the fact that he brought up kind of having a package that goes out at the closing. I was like, that's different. Emily! Hi, my What's friend. Up? How are you? It's so it's nice been to a see while. you. It has been a while. Um, I have to tell you, before we get started, I really laughed when I saw the title of today's event, The Throttle Your Team, because maybe it's where we're all living. Like, whether you're a team leader or like maybe you want to throttle your own team leader if you're on a team. But I literally giggled. I was like, yes, I'd like to throttle a few people yeah. <laughs> into like productivity or using systems yeah. or so anyway, I gotta have a giggle about that I when I saw you. saw the title come through. But um I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me today. Well, I'm glad I'm glad we made you laugh because we were laughing when we made it too. We're like, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> this is good. That's awesome. I like it. Uh, All right. Well, Emily, yeah. quick, quick intro. Let us know what you do, what you cover, how long you've been doing this, just so people can engage. Yeah, no, I'd be happy to. So um, I'll I'll get into that in just a quick second, if you don't mind. But I just want to tell you, like today, um, there's been some really great content already shared. I've taken a lot of notes. Um, I logged in ahead of being in on this Zoom as a consumer, just so I could listen into the brilliance. And so I want to say to those of you that are listening in, if you find yourself with a team that's like humming along and doing everything they're supposed to do, or you're on the other side of that and you're leading a team that's like hanging on by a thread right now and you're grinding and just mm -hmm. trying to make it work, I really hope that what you can take from this part of our session today is some practical ideas for how to shape your culture, how to define who you are and how you are going to do business in this next season. Because ultimately, I really believe that knowing the answer to those questions is going to allow you to grow. I think it sets the bar for what can be tolerated on a team in any area, and it will let you make good choices about where your team is going, who you're hiring, who you're bringing into your environment. Because ultimately, when you hire to your team, it really matters greatly about how you're building towards something together. So I wanted to start today with that, and then I'll give you the lens, which is what Tristan asked for, of just telling you who I am. So I'm Emily Smith. I'm the COO of Weimer Group Realty in Orlando, Florida, and I've personally been with the team for about nine years, a um, little over. We are an independent brokerage that works as a true team. And I saw some questions in the chat earlier about what does that mean? What's a team? Like, what does that mean? And so for us, I'll get into that just a little bit later. So if you hang tight with me, I'll explain how that works for us. But in the last two years, our brokerage has served about 1,500 families for over $750 million in real estate. We are super jealous of you California agents or people in New York City who have like crazy amazing price points because uh, we have to grind it out. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, but, you know, some of us are grinding it out trying to get to that, you know, 1,500 families. So uh, at Weimer Group, we are, this is the thing I'm like most proud of. We have 34 team members who have been a part of our 80 team member team for over five years. And there are literally no words to describe how honored we are that our team members place their trust and stay. They are the heartbeat behind what we do. And you'll hear that throughout what I'm talking about today, because we are nothing without our teammates that stay with us and build with us. Um, we are also a rainmaking team, and so we utilize paid lead sources, and it's important for me to share that with you so you kind of understand how we're structured, but 50% of our business last year was directly attributed to repeat clients or referrals. So our big goal when an agent joins the team is to help them learn how to build a sustainable business and a really, really great referral network but while also helping them build. So if they need a paid lead source or they need uh, a lead to fill that pipeline in the meantime while they're building, we want to be able to provide that to them. And so that's a bit about how the business is structured. Um, I personally serve and work alongside our two owners, Mike and Jenny Wiemert. I am so biased, but they are literally the most wonderful, humble, smart, like capable yes. people maybe on the planet. I don't know. Jenny in particular is like my person uh, outside of my spouse. And she's been in real estate for coming up on 25 years. Um, the team's been around for 16. And then we've been an independent brokerage for about seven. And I share that with you. I heard Tristan say earlier, he's been in this for the short time of 20 years. I thought that was kind of brilliant. Uh, he said it that way. But everything in our Weimert world has been built over time. 
so often, I think we hop onto these webinars and we hear people talk and we're like, oh, I could never get there. or oh, I could never serve, you know, 1500 families in two years, or I could never build, you know, that network piece like Gary Ashton was just talking about with vendors. And the truth is it just takes one step at a time and you find yourself building that next piece or duct taping that, that next hole. And then all of a sudden you have some really amazing things built and you look back and you're like, how on earth did we do this? Time, time and effort. So um, I don't know about you, Tristan, but for us, it's like countless hours, sleepless nights, all the problems, <laughs> all, all the duct tape, like that's how it gets done, right? Like that's how you run a successful team. Yes. I think time is the biggest element. So I'd also, um, and I think in this market in particular, or this season, since I know real estate's a little tricky right now, it's also the necessity of making changes when you need to. Mm -hmm. So being willing to pivot, being willing to shift as the market is changing or as new technology shows up, you know, like crypto showed up a few years ago and we were all like, shoot, do we need to know how to sell real estate using crypto yet? Or you name it, right? Things change and you have to be willing to pivot and make those changes when necessary. The other piece of that is understanding that you're working with real people. These are real people, staff, agents, VAs, you name it, that are trusting you. scary. And their lives. Hey, so when is it? The 18th? Let me grab Gary. When's the oh, event? Good. Oh, no, you're talking about. This. Let me. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you're... Gary's a busy man. We know. So no big... I love Gary. Me too, actually. So, um, actually, funny story, real quick about Gary. I had, I was lucky to be at a dinner with um, a few folks from Wylope. I think Barry may have been at that dinner too. And Gary Ashton was at the table. And he was mm -hmm. messing with poor Howard the whole time. And Howard didn't know it was him. And it was just crack. Jenny and I were like sitting in the corner giggling at Gary for, you know, messing with our poor host the whole time. So anyway, yes. Anyway, so going backwards, in order to run a successful team, it takes time, willingness to make changes, but also remembering you're working with real people yeah. and they are trusting you with not like these, this is their life and they're, you know, you are being entrusted with how they can support their family and their dreams. And then they're in turn, obviously working with clients who are trusting us and them with their biggest investment purchase or sale. So I want to take us back kind of all the way to the beginning. I know that was a lot, but can you define who you are and how you do business? Um, Tristan started this webinar this morning with some amazing content. So if you missed it, this would be my plug-in to go back and actually listen to his charge of what it means to be a great leader. Um, he also asked early on, what are some of the stressors for team leaders? And I watched the chat like light up with all kinds of things. And people were saying systems like agent accountability, onboarding, consistency. And there were so many things um, and I just want to encourage you, if you're a leader and you were watching that list, like I was going, yep, 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 yep. Mm -hmm. And you're feeling like you're struggling with those things. You're not alone. Like even when you see some of like bigger teams or people that look very successful saying, we've got this all figured out. They don't. And we don't like, we don't have all the answers. And so please know you're not alone when you see those things show up in a chat. Um, we are all struggling with those things and we're all doing the best we can to, again, put some duct tape around it or plug a hole or figure out how to best bring those things back to the circuit surface. But what I found in my seat is that having that solid foundation of who you are and how you're going to run your business is going to actually set the tone for managing all of those stressors and all of those moving pieces. And that's whether you're like putting staff in place or putting agents in place, you have to know those pieces in order to manage all of that. So today, in order to walk you through a little bit of our world, I wanna open up our playbook um, and show you something that we use during our hiring process. And I'll, I'll live demonstrate the tool. If I, can I have sharing screen ability, would that be great? Thank you. Check um, here. And I'm going to go ahead and do that now. But this is something we call our Team Life magazine. All right. And I'm going to rely on the team here to tell me if we can see that. I think so. All good. I like it. I see it. Awesome. So this is our Team Life magazine. And I want to walk you through each section of this and share with you why we've put this content in the book and how we think this kind of contributes to our successes. 
And for mm -hmm. us, how it answers those two questions, I kind of keep going back to here. So first, this lives on our website, on our career page. Um, there's an inquiry form right underneath of it on our page that we ask every interested agent that wants to be a part of Weimar Group Realty to fill out. Um, and typically, I can tell if an agent reads this magazine based on the questions they ask in the hiring process. So there's that. Um, but if you want to see what I'm sharing with you, you can actually go to our website. It's weimergrouprealty.com forward slash career. And it lives there all the time. So when we update this, that page gets updated right away. Um, and I have agents all over the country that have reached out and asked about this um, over time because it's something different that not every team has. So our cover, which you're staring at right now, it's a little cheesy, like I'll, I'll admit, but these are real clients who have closed on this home. And what I wanted to draw your attention to is the welcome home sign in the yard. And keep in mm -hmm. mind, this is used for agents or maybe future staff folks that we're hiring that would want to come be a part of our team. And so what we're trying to do here is, is set a tone for what's important to us as a team to find people that want to be in alignment with coming in and building like we do to be able to answer those questions that I've referenced in the beginning of this. And so that welcome home sign in the yard is something that our agents take to every walkthrough and they put in the yard and it just kind of helps create that excitement and kind of a real and genuine photo op for every buy side closing. And so as a side note, this also provides really great photos for a closing post for social media for agents. It's not them sitting at a title company or with an attorney. It's them in their yard, excited, like the energy is palpable at walkthrough. And so it's a great time to take those photos. It's also a time to maybe share those photos back with the clients and say, hey, if you want to share this on your own social media page, you're giving them uh, the way to do that. But you're also sneaking for us our website in there. So on the bottom of our welcome home site, and it says lovewemergrouprealty.com. So if the neighbor sees the sign or if somebody on social media sees it, they can get back to us easily, but it feels more genuine. Um, so just a little nugget there. But we also have these photos all over our office of our real clients holding these signs as a reminder that when you're in our space, we are privileged to help real people. <laughs> these are real people. And as realtors, I, I believe that homeownership literally changes the trajectory of people's futures. So in this season, and especially when it's really hard, please do not forget that you and your team are changing lives. You are literally changing lives with what you do. And it's easy to lose sight of that when things are hard or frustrating. So this cover for me sets the stage for what is most important to our team, which is our clients, because without them, we really don't have a business. Um, and then from here, when you open it, the first thing you're going to see is uh, it says that we're local real estate experts. You see some of our badges and our, our stats and a note from Jenny. And what we're really aiming for here is credibility. We want agents looking to join our team to understand that they are walking into the middle of an already great story. And, and this is super important, there's room in our story for them to help us continue to create success. But coming into the team means coming into a brokerage that has a reputation of success already being built. So we're making sure that our earned badges are updated or we're telling the story of our success in our numbers. Um, the letter from Jenny to me is a way to give visibility to our team leader because she is the heartbeat of the team. And so we honor also in the, like, we want to honor the time someone's putting into like looking at our team as an option when it comes to aligning their business with ours. We actually literally say in that paragraph, if you were to read it, that uh -huh. we understand that our brand and our way may not be a perfect fit for every agent reading the material. We are setting up expectations from the start in our materials that when we hire, our model may not be a fit for everyone who wants to be a part of it. And so using these pages, we're starting to set that stage for telling the who we are piece. It's our reputation. It's the expectation that we're looking for great fits, that not everyone can be a part or maybe even will want to be a part of what we're creating. And so for us, ultimately, this leads us to be able then to talk about um, our culture. So I'm going to switch to this next page here for us. Okay. Do you guys print this out digitally too or no? Yeah, we do. We have um, physical copies of this, like a real magazine in the office. Um, and people can, we can mail them out. People can stop in and get them. We give them out during interviews or 
you can go to the website and get the, the digital version, or we can send it. If someone emails and says, I'm interested in talking to your company, we refer them out to the career page as a starting point. That's cool. Uh, yeah, we, for me, it was, um, I was tired of explaining it, honestly, Tristan, like having to regurgitate this information over and over again, this gives us a landing place for all of the information to live together so that it's easy for someone to look through and go, who are these guys? What are these guys about? Would I even want to join them in what they're building? And so that's why this was really built from the start. So you can see here, um, we're kind of a fun group. We love dressing up and having a theme for things. It's a part of kind of who we are and, and how we're built. Um, and we believe culture is everything. And I know culture is a little bit of a buzzword, um, but we define that as our who, who are we? Um, if you've heard me speak on anything else, or I've I've been privileged to speak with Tristan a couple of times or with follow up boss, you've you've heard me talk about WeMates, so I won't spend a lot of time on it. But we call each other WeMates instead of teammates. Um, I know it's a little silly, it's a little slick. That's cute. Oh, I like that. I, I like it too. And and it's instead of teammates because we're WeMert Group Realty. So if you have a W name, you could be WeMates too if you want. But uh, we haven't copyrighted it, so you can have it. But the idea there is that we are a collective we. We are working towards a collective good. So it's we instead of I. And you can see it on your screen. But M is masters of our craft. We want to be accountable for our actions. We want to be teachable, elevate others. And we want to be the S as solution-based at all costs. And this is who we are as a team. It's a clear picture of who we are. In my, and that's that's what we're aiming to show with with these pages in this book. Sorry, Tristan, I interrupted. Do you have a question? Yeah, this, th does this change every quarter? How often do you guys publish? This is once a year. Um, this changes as it needs to, to be really honest with you. In the beginning, it was changing often because we were building it and trying to figure out what we needed in it. But now it's really changes as we need to change it. So I, I would say it gets looked at every time we um, make a hire because we're thinking about, does this still align? Do we change anything? Or if something large changes in the brokerage, like we're going to get to some of the other pages about expectations. If those shift, then this needs to shift too. So in the Got beginning, it. more changes as of now, not as, I wouldn't say as many. Um, we try to put eyeballs on all of our printed materials though a couple times a year and make sure that everything is still correct. Not just in these, but we have like buyer seller books and a couple of other printed materials that we try to make sure are still right. Cause those are yeah. expensive. They're wrong to, you know, get reprinted. Yeah. Um, so anyway, this is, this is what we're painting. We're painting that picture for a hire of who we are, and we're trying to define both for us and the person sitting at the table that we're interviewing on whether or not the brokerage is actually going to be that fit that I referenced earlier in Jenny's letter out of the gate. Do you want to be a master of your craft? Do you want to be accountable when things go wrong? Can you take ownership of that and work to fix it? Um, do you want to be a part of an environment where talking badly about other teammates or clients or co-op agents or vendor partners is tolerated? Or do you want to align with someone, you know, that embodies all of these things that we're asking those that join our company to be? So we actually care about this so much. We use the next three pages in our book to kind of like continue to illustrate this. And I'll show you that now. Um, so we take time on these pages to show like a deeper level of what do those letters mean to us? It's not just like a quick little quip. It's like, this is how this plays out. Um, and then we use the next few pages to tell a story that's been passed on for lots of years. A lot of you may have heard this actually um, about an anthropologist who was studying like the habits and the culture of this remote American tribe or African tribe. And it's such a great story, but in the story, the anthropologist, he puts this basket of fruit and he gathered in like the middle of the town and he gathers up all the kids and he tells them the first one to the fruit wins the fruit. And the children kind of surprise him in the story by sitting around the bowl all together and they link arms and they share the fruit. And so Jenny has been using this story in our world for longer than I've been here. And I've been with her nine years. So she's been telling this story now for oh, at least over nine years. But the mm. idea is I am because we are Ubuntu. And so in real estate, we are building a reputation together. We are telling people, if you want to come be a part of what we're building, you are wanting to be defined by something like WeMates. You are wanting to be defined by this Ubuntu concept 
of Mm -hmm. I am because we are, we are stronger together. And that's a choice. Like some agents don't actually want to function that way. They want to be independent. They want to grow something on their own and that's okay. But knowing who we are as a team helps us define those fits at the hiring table from both sides. Um, We actually start to shift gears as we go into the next section of the book into that second question I was asking, which is how do you do business? Um, and that's where we start to talk about expectations for we may agent life on the team. And this is the page that probably shifts the most as we mm-hmm. make changes as the market shifts, or as we change things around like expectations for meetings. Um, but the idea here is that from the start, before they even join the team, we're clearly laying out for them what it is that we're requiring from them when they join the team. So there are no questions. Uh, And so when we develop these expectations as a team leader, we try to put ourselves in an agent's seat. And this is a mistake I feel like I see a lot of team leaders make is they come out of an agent seat where they've never been in an agent seat and they, they have a hard time remembering what it's like to be on the run in their car, managing portals and technology and all the things from their phones. And it gets really hard to remember how hard it is to live in an agency. So put yourself in their shoes and think about things in terms of fairness or adaptability or adoptability or in wanting to make sure that you're calling people to a certain level of growth that actually makes sense or is attainable. Try to be fair about how you're asking or what you're asking of your teammates. So in our world, Um, setting these expectations to like attend team meetings or meet with leadership or being a part of certain events from the top, it tells them this is how we're going to accomplish who we want you to be here. This is how we're going to get there. And this is our expectation. And again, it's laid out from the start. So when they come to the hiring table, if they have questions about those things, or if they disagree, it's a good time to talk about it before they come in and we start sharing life together a little more. Um, on our next pages, we talk about being stronger together or running our, our our branding together. And we use these next pages basically to make sure that we have a chance in telling those that are interested in joining us that we actually really care about our client experience, like our mm-hmm. systems, our marketing, like we want that to stay top tier, but really that for us, all of these things work best when they're, when they're tied together and that we're flying the same flag and branding ourselves together as we work group realty. So In our brokerage, um, I said earlier, we function as a true team. And this means you won't see agents who have their own branding or logos, which is different than some teams. And for us, we just believe it's confusing to the consumer sometimes when they see like too many names or too many logos, they don't know who they're getting or what, you know, what's happening. And so for us, it's just become a part of our value set that we hire to people that feel like we do. And that they're okay being a part of a team, but branding to Weimar Group Realty. And I'll I'll be honest, sometimes in the hiring process, I've sat with really incredibly talented agents who could have really done well on the team, but who had this vision of maybe like having their own logo or wanting to see their name in lights, so to speak. And Mm -hmm. that's more than we can give them in our model. And we know that it's defined here. And so in those cases, because we know who we are and how we're building, it's easier to say to that person, like, hey, you are amazing and I would love to have you here, but I, it, it can't be a fit because ultimately you're not going to be here happy long-term and we know it. So you do the right thing and you do the right thing for the person sitting in front of you and you make the introduction to a different brokerage or you give them some ideas about other places that they could go even if you know that they're going to be successful without you and you just give and because it's a part of who you are as a we mate, we do the right thing. We will elevate them. We will help them be solution oriented, even if they're not joining the team um, because it's not a fit. And so I will admit it's really hard to turn down talent sitting in front of you when it shows up, even when you clearly can tell it's not a fit, it's hard as a team leader because we want to make it work and we want to try to like, carve out circles into, you know, round peg, square hole, but you build trust with your own teammates who have already entrusted you when you say no to things that look like you're trying to fit, fit something that doesn't fit. So don't be afraid to say no. Um, the what for us continues, I'm sorry, use my hands a lot. It's like, I can't stop them. They just, I need to like sit on them sometimes I think, but 
the what for us continues in the book with defining um, what our agents do and how much they're compensated for that work. And so as we turn the page here, you'll see that um, we show in our world that agents can work with both buyers or sellers, and we're defining what we expect from them from the start here. So yes, we want you to do follow-up. Yes, you are expected to actually prep for the calls that you're making. You are expected to attend photos or make weekly updates to a seller or attend closings. As silly as that stuff sounds, defining it from the start and then training to that list once an agent is hired so that the agent has clarity on their role at the brokerage, but also kind of from the start, they can see that we have expectations of professionalism. They can see that we have care in our processes and also in making sure that they continue their relationship after closing. It's right there. They can see it on the list. So they have clarity from their role or on their role from the start. And then we support that by real life training on the other side once they onboard onto the team. Um, and I think that's big. I think a lot of teams promise a lot of things or they, and we're not promising here. We're saying this is who we expect you to be. On the other side of it, we are supporting so that they can become all they're meant to be to do those things. And that's our job as a team leader is to give them the tools and give them the things that they need in order to bring them up to be the best kind of agent that they can be for themselves, for their clients, and for the teams. Um, and then this leads us to splits. So um, I imagine this is probably the page that most agents reading our book actually care about. And I that's that's a rightfully so. Like this is how an agent feeds their family. This is how they fund their dreams. We know this. And this so this is incredibly important. Um, and I also know that we could have as a brokerage the best technology, great systems, the most amazing support staff on the planet, which I'm very biased. We do. Um, also, side note, Tristan, you also have such an amazing support staff. I'm always so impressed at them. You mentioned um, in your session this morning that you look for people that lead with kindness mm -hmm. and that shows up in spades with the communication from your team. So kudos to you all on that. So just a side note. Hey, that's super kind. But, I appreciate that. I, I have well, a question for you from the audience once you, yeah, once you wrap No, yeah, because I'm just rattling. So of course, absolutely. Oh, got got? It. okay. Emily, it says, do you do weekly meetings also? So we do monthly meetings, uh, all team meetings. We used to do weekly meetings. And to be honest with you, it was too much for this time period in the team's life. Uh, as we've expanded to 80 team members, it the team got so big, it was really hard for people to get back to the office. And we're, we're serving like 114 zip codes in Orlando. So it's a little bit different of a market than maybe folks that have two zip codes or three zip codes. And so we just made the decision that we would ask everyone to come in once a month for an all team meeting. And we use those for training. Um, I try to, we, they're two hours long. We try to maximize those things as much as possible. And we always bring in lunch after the meeting just to build relationships. So some people don't care about that. They don't stay for lunch. It's not important to them. But some of the people on the team that really need and want relationships, that's a place where they can build those and they can get to know others on the team by just mm -hmm. staying after team meeting and having lunch. And we typically partner with a vendor partner on that. So the expense is shared or they're picking it up or we're helping. Like it just depends. But that's a way to get that done. And I love that room after a team meeting. Like the just watching people get to know each other. And then when they ask each other for favors or if somebody needs a door opened in a different zip code, they now have faces with names that they never had before. And so that lunch part is actually sometimes more valuable than the training that happens in the meeting, believe it or not. Um, so but we also offer them many, what we call EDU classes, like education classes um, during the month. And we always, always have a, what we call listing mastery meeting that happens on the opposite. Like we do team meeting the second week of the month and we do listing mastery on the fourth and listing mastery is where we learn to speak data and marketing. And we teach agents how we market their, like how we help market their homes, how they can help market their properties themselves, how they can communicate with their sellers on how the seller can help partner with marketing that home. And we teach them about our processes and we talk about homes that have smirches that are sitting too long. And we have all kinds of internal language around this stuff, but we talk data and we talk listings on a high level. Um, that is attended, I would say by like half the team. It's not, it's not required, 
but I learned the most in that meeting. And I have for the last nine years, I, I have said that for nine years now, that is the meeting where I feel like we really dig into the meat and potatoes behind what we do. And if you're a newer agent, that's always the meeting that I recommend that you really make sure you have on your calendar. And then EDUs are education opportunities around a whole lot of topics. Like right now, we're talking about what's going on in the current real estate world and helping agents with buyer broker agreements. Um, we're problem solving things like, do you have a CPA? Are you a real business? Like, have you done the things you need to do on that side? Or maybe classes on hidden inventory and figuring out how to best service buyers. So those are typically based on what holes we're seeing, where we're trying to duct tape and teach people on the fly the things that they would need to know that we haven't been able to get into one of our regular meetings or where the topic doesn't fit listing. So long answer, but that's kind of how we structure that calendar um, in order to provide that value for, for teammates. That. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right, so to continue going with this, I know the splits are ridiculously important. Um, and we know too that like, we could have the best systems and staff, but if if the splits aren't fair, the agents aren't staying. And that's just the truth. So um, we tried to, again, put ourselves in their shoes and try to figure out how to be fair to the agent and create still a very profitable model where we could keep the lights on. We can pay our staff really well because that's also really important. And we could go the extra mile for our team. Um, and so that's that's how we landed here. As a leadership um, team, we also have to really be paying attention to the cycle of business for our teammates. And what I mean by that is we have to be ready to hire agents when we see that we have too many leads sitting that aren't getting the attention that they need, or we have to be ready to hire staff ahead of hitting capacity with our current agents so that we have time to train them before it gets too busy. Um, there's kind of a running joke in our world that if somebody's crying in the parking lot, we've waited too long to hire. It's terrible, but it's true. And so as a leader, my challenge to you today would be you have to know your people. You have to know what someone's on your team, know their goals. And if you don't know your people, you have to have somebody on your team that does. Um, we work with humans. I said this earlier, but they mm -hmm. will have things that pop in unexpectedly, like weddings or babies or graduation, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, this is the stuff. Right. Like, I, the best. Right. I don't know. My my oldest graduated a few weeks ago, and we've been in it. Like, it's it's way oh, more wow. effort and time and energy than you would expect. And so, yeah. um, they they're humans. Also, unexpected. I our team has been dealing with health issues or like aging parents or these are real things. Mm -hmm. So or really honestly, agents just being three or four years in and burning out. And I'm sure every team is seeing that on some level. It's a hamster wheel, sales is hard. So as leaders being mindful that your um, people are humans and not robots, and that most people get into this business for some sort of um, way to get time back in their life, which we kind of know is a joke once you get in it, but, but mm -hmm. you can. But so having like clear expectations and understanding their goals for the current season you're all in together is really important. Um, at Weimert, we actually meet with our agents at the end of each year and when they come in to talk through their goals. So um, our agents set their own goals because for us, it never made sense to set those for them. Um, if, if they're not interested in attaining it, like we've just realized that you can't motivate somebody to something that they aren't really personally motivated to. So we work with the agent to figure out what they need from the business. Um, and I try to steer people away from talking about like, how many houses do you want to sell? How many families do you want to work with? It's not about that for me. It's about what they need to pay their bills. So um, we have a spreadsheet that we give them that lets them work backwards. So they can say, my goal is to make, pick a number, X amount of dollars. How many houses for each of these splits would I have to sell and like at each commission rate, they can adjust it in order to make what I need, but it allows them to play with it and dream a little bit too and say, okay, I need this, but if I could really kill it this year, I could make this, or if I could just sell that one more house or work with that one more family, but it's working backwards off of what they need from the business, not like necessarily some pie in the sky number that they think that they need. And so um, once we kind of know what their goals are, we can support them appropriately. You can encourage people if they're stretching towards something or struggling. Um, but it also tells us as a brokerage, if we are going to need to hire 
towards the end of the year to meet our own goals for the next year. So meeting with our teammates off the end of the year lets them get recentered. It pushes them to focus on their own business and where they're going for the following year, but it also puts us back in alignment with what those goals are. So I have agents that sometimes have done huge businesses and then they come in and they're like, I'm, I'm going to take six months off next year. And as a team leader, you're like, no, I watched somebody in the chat this morning actually say agents that come in and out of the business, like it's hard because it is, yeah. it's hard on the team leader when you're yeah. wanting this to be consistent. So knowing if you need to hire ahead of that, because you're going to have a gap is only possible if you are meeting with your people and finding out what their goals really are. Just Good my point. two cents on that. Oh. Um, this split page two also leads us to really great conversations at the hiring table about what an agent needs from this business and about whether or not we can actually help them from the start, make their goals. I've had some really great agents sit down that I think would be like a wonderful fit for the team. And then they have really un like unrealistic expectations about how much they're going to make from the start. And so it gives us a chance to be honest with them about our track record and what we've seen and what we know is possible. And then again, that spreadsheet kind of helps too, because it gives them real numbers to actually play with. So they can go, oh, you mean in order to make X amount of dollars, I have to sell an amount of houses that I'm not willing to do the work on that. And it sets that, that level of expectation for everyone um, right off the start. So asking what they need to make from the business has been a game changer on how to structure that conversation. And then being upfront with our splits and talking with them about why we've built them this way at the hiring table means less questions later when they turn in turn in a file or they've worked with a family and they finally gotten someone under contract and they're like, well, why isn't it this split or why isn't it that? Like taking the time to define that upfront means less confusion later for everyone else. So um, last two pages of the book, for those of you that are worrying that this is going to like go on forever, it won't, I promise. But um, this <laughs> is defining, <laughs> this is, I could talk about this stuff all day. I, I love the, like the people and the systems and how it all comes together is my jam. So uh, it's easy for me to want to just keep sharing with you all, but these are our last two pages. And um, this for me defines for people, the value of what they're receiving for the splits that, that we are offering. So what value is our team bringing to their business and to them? And so we list things out for them that we're giving them. But the most important part of this that I want to draw your attention to is the list of intangibles. Has an agent maybe thought about the fact that joining a team means like a proven reputation or track record or coverage for when they're out of town or leadership they can actually get a hold of? Um, that's a note that you should be able to be get a hold of as a leader. Uh, but have they thought about those things or even just like feeling less alone in the business? As silly as that sounds, like real estate can be very lonely for people. And that's where things like coaching programs or doing things and connecting back in, in order to keep yourself centered and growing matters. Those mm -hmm. intangibles matter. So we show them that here. Um, the lead gen piece that's really important and showing them that the team is in partnership with many other companies that generate leads um, it's a bit of a hot button topic I know in our industry, but it's a way for someone looking at us from the start to see that this is a part of our model. And then yeah. they can make their own decisions about that. And they can ask questions about that. We're open books as much as we can be with them about all of that and about how it works and how that might or may not benefit their future business. And that is really important to us. Um, and then lastly, we speak to our technology stack because partially when you join our team, and this is again, part of how we function is that you are required to use our technology stack that we've developed um, because that's the only way our systems and our staff can work effectively. And so agents can make some comparisons to what they're already using. They can ask questions about those things. The number of people I've sat down with at the hiring table that are like, I don't know, my people are still in my phone as a contact list, or I just have a spreadsheet. Like, all of that's okay when you're coming into a team that uses technology, if you're willing to put the work in to understand and like be a master of your craft and dive into using these new systems. But I will tell you, it's a lot and we know it. So we talk about it up front. We talk about it at the hiring table. We're very transparent and clear about our expectations because I don't want somebody coming into the team and going, I didn't realize you were going to make me use these portals or use this kind of technology. I've always used this other thing. 
and I'm really connected to it or I really love it. So being upfront from the start just sets that expectation um, for the person that you're hiring. And so I know we're running out of time. So I want to kind of wrap this um, by saying oh, that I'm at the glance, but this is how we show who we are as a team and how we run our business and what we expect. And sitting across from that person at a table, having all of this defined makes it a lot easier for me or for us to figure out if that person is a fit for the team. We actually tell people in interviews that we want them to interview the team as much as we're interviewing them because yeah. it's got to be a partnership. It has to be a true partnership for it, not just to work like short term, but for it to be a long term investment in each other. And so as a brokerage, if I don't define the who and the how, like it's really hard for people to know if they can actually fit into your space. It's hard for them to know if they can abide by what you expect because they don't know what you expect. They can't read your brain. Um, in maybe like getting it down on paper is a good first step in helping people see. So again, like lots of other things that we could have talked about today, but if you're like, well, we haven't done any of this. I don't, this feels really challenging. Like, I don't, I don't even know where to start. Like mm -hmm. just start with like who you are as a leader. And if you're on a team, you're not the leader, you're a leader. I'm a firm right. believer that you can lead from whatever seat you're in, even if you don't have the title. So start with who you are, figure out who that is, like get a piece of paper today and just start scrolling. Like, who do I want to be? Who, who do I want to show up as in my business? And then look at your list and pick the like top five that mean the most to you on that list and just go like show up as that. If you are on a team and you feel like you're already doing the personal leadership part well, do the same thing for your team. And if, if you've been with people for a while, invite them into the conversation and ask them, who are we as a team and dream that up together, because that will help you begin to define who you are. And then as you begin to hire, you now have that clarity to say, okay, what am I holding people to here? Or, okay, we can't bring this person on because the team said, this is who we are. And this person clearly doesn't align with who the team kind of said. So yeah. those are, those are kind of some practicals of where I'd start with all of this today. Um, especially when you're bringing people into this story that like is a middle, like us, we're bringing people into the middle of our story. And so it's important that they know where they're stepping into and, and why they're stepping into that. And so I'll leave you with this. Um, I have people ask me all the time, like why people stay with our team for so long, like having 34 teammates, I said this off the start that have been here five years or more is crazy. Yeah. Like that's heard of. And if you ask them all, they would give you different answers, but at the core of it, um, they stay because we have fair splits. They stay because they're given a lot of leverage and great technology and leadership that I think really cares about them, but they also stay because they're in alignment with who we are. They want to show up to the broader real estate space as we made they want to be masters of their craft. They want to be accountable for their actions. They want to be teachable. They want to elevate others. They want to be solution-based. They want to function as a we. That's why they stay. And having that who piece to find up front means they can trust that we're always going to build to that. And it means that there's always a seat at the table for them because they're wired to that too. So me to you, start with who you are and how you will do business and let that be the clarity for you along the way as you build. I love that. Emily, that was, that was good. I love how you have that. A all lot. In Sorry. <laughs> Listen, we should do in the a brilliant tribe group coaching, we should do a session where you go through just the marketing aspect of what you, yeah. what you have. That'd be amazing. Uh, I'd be let's happy see, to do that. Yeah. just the audience really quick. If you're going to jump into group coaching, what would you like Emily to talk about from that package? I, I wanted to see more on the marketing side as the next one. Um, sure. But what about what about you guys? What what did you want to take a look at from what Emily's got? Emily, I as soon as you popped it up, I sent that over to the team. I grabbed the link to, yeah. and I That's sent awesome. it over to the team. I'm like, guys, um, why didn't we do this? <laughs>
Well, do you know what's funny is we didn't have it either for a long time, right? I said this, I got tired of like typing the same emails or copy pasting from different things or people would be like, well, what do you offer for your splits? And you're like, okay, well, I'm laying it out in this email or I'm talking about it at a table. And I'm I'm in a season in leadership where if I do something more than twice, I'm trying to stop and mm-hmm. ask, should I document this? Should someone else be doing this? Like it's a, it's a new season for me. I'm a very um, independent personality. I like to hold on to things as long as possible, too long sometimes. So I'm learning to, st- <laughs> it's just part of like, it's part of it. So funny, but I'm learning yeah. to stop and, and ask like, what of this should be documented so that it doesn't have to be repeated so that it can be passed on so that someone else can manage or send it out. Um, and then with a team, I mean, we're talking about deep stuff. This is the stuff that your teammates or your staff should be able to actually articulate alongside of you. If you mm. ask my teammates what we mates means, like, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think all of them could give you all of the acronym letters off the top of their heads. They know they've heard it. They've read it. We talk about it all the time. They'd have to think about it because they don't live in it like I do. They don't sit at the hiring table a couple of times a week and interview people and talk about those concepts in the same way that I do. So you have to find creative ways to keep that culture building, who we are, what are we in front of them all the time so that, so by calling them we mates, they know they're being called to a higher standard. They know even if they don't remember that S stands for solution based on a daily basis, they know they're being called to a higher standard and they know they agreed at the hiring table to being led to that standard. So if I need to call somebody in and say, Hey, you're not being solution based or Hey, stop talking junk about the lender. I overheard like, stop it. We're not, that's not who we are. Like when you say, yes, I want to come be a wee mate. You're saying, yes, I, you can do that. That's okay. That's a part of what they're agreeing to when they're hired. That's good. I like that uh, question. But uh, first, uh, Linda Moreno, Anthony, Lara, and Bob Powell, go ahead and type in your questions. You can put them in the Q and A or in the chat. Uh, I see your hands raised. Uh, or if you're just raising your hand, you're going to join group coaching. That's awesome. Also, Santa just put in the the link there. Uh, Bree has a question for you, Emily. Yep. How do you handle an agent who's trying their best but still not hitting their numbers? That's such a hard one. Um, and that's that becomes more of like a one-to-one sit down, a hard look at how are you spending your time and is your time being spent wisely and trying to figure out have they exhausted all of the resources that the team does provide. And what I mean by that is if you're a lead generating team, like are they taking advantage of the opportunities that they have? A lot of teams have ponds that agents can call through or they have lists or are they hosting open houses? Are they doing all of the things in their power to move the needle? And if the answer is yes, I first of all, I don't believe it. But secondly, like that that's I'm just gonna put it out there like typically there is a part of the needle that can be moved sometimes they just need somebody else to sit with them and sort through how they are spending their time Um, I had an agent once say to me I'm so busy I'm so busy I just I'm maximizing my time and we talked about it and she started tracking her actual work time on her phone like she would stop and start a timer and she called me at the end of the day and she's like I'm actually really embarrassed I felt so busy today, but when I looked at like the timer on my phone, I worked like three hours and in Mm. my mind, I worked like a 15 hour day. But if I, if I didn't calculate this time and I realized I was, you know, up talking to so-and-so during this time and I, whatever it is, it was an eye-opening experiment for her though, that the time she was spending wasn't maybe being spent wisely. So Brie, what I would do is meet with that agent and audit the time that they are spending on the activities and then see if they're maximizing every opportunity in front of them. When's the last time they called their past clients and just checked in? When's the last time they checked in with, as silly as it sounds, even their next door neighbors? Like, are they building relationships in the spaces that they're in in order to build pipeline business? And then what opportunities is the brokerage or the team bringing them that they could plug into on the other side of that? But how are they spending their time? I like that. Track it, track it. Good question, Bree. If you got any other questions, Emily, how do we get a hold of you? 
So I'm um, on Facebook, Emily Tompkins Smith. Smith is pretty common. So Emily Tompkins Smith, and you're welcome to follow me, but really you're going to see pictures of my cute kids and my cats. So in uh, the hubbies. <laughs> so I would highly recommend instead that you follow Weimer Group Realty, um, both on Instagram, we're in all the places, Facebook, all the things. Um, and you can track with us on how we do our social media and how we post our, you know, just listeds and our just solds and how we credit to our agents because you're all agents. And so being able to learn from each other is important and get ideas from each other. So follow Weimer Group Realty. If you care about my personal life, you're totally welcome to follow me on, on Instagram or Facebook uh, at Emily Tompkins Smith too. I like it. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate you, Emily. Of course. I appreciate you bringing me on. Thanks. All right. We've got five more minutes. Emily did an amazing job. Thank you for that. I wanted to quickly show you what we've got to offer just in case you missed it. Wrapping up the last thing. Let me share my screen with you. This is specifically for teams and broker owners. So if you have, if you're a single agent, uh, this is not for you. We have different coaching for you. So the, we call it visionaries. These are some of our coaches and we bring in other people as well to come in and guide you, whether it's through marketing, onboarding, shifting, anything that teams and brokerages are doing. These are all agents that are practicing or part of the actual process of transacting. These are people that are actually doing it. That's the big difference. These are some of the other people that we bring on, some amazing friends of ours that have done great stuff. We talk about recruiting, retention, ROI. Those are the three R's that we really gravitate around. And we find that these three cover most of the things that most team leaders, brokers, and in fact, agents and mega agents worry about the most. So that's what we've got for you. Asusena Trenton will put in the link. Uh, there's some examples of some of our shorter videos. And then we've got some testimonials up there. Look, at the end of the day, I want you to shift into becoming the team leader, becoming the team or the brokerage that you know you can be. A lot of the times we need help. We need guidance. We need the ability to shift, but we also need to be able to shift correctly. Not all paths lead to the promised land. And so what we've done is we're bringing in the people that have already achieved it, that are currently achieving, that are changing and shifting along the right paths to greatness. And we want to bring you into that. Hopefully you participate in this. It's a small group setting for team leaders and brokers. Any questions here as I wrap up? We're a tiny little bit over. Let's see what we've got. Uh, great question, Bree. Let me go to Antonio. Uh, how do you see the future uh, of brokerages online or brick? Uh, Antonio, great question. It's going to be a combo. We're going to see uh, the virtual brokerages that you're starting to see more of will eventually start getting some brick and mortars. We saw the same thing happen with Amazon, where they were all virtual, and then they slowly started placing brick and mortars strategically throughout. And what did they do after? They bought Whole Foods and those are already everywhere. So it's going to be a combination. You're never going to get rid of the brick and mortar, specifically in luxury areas. Uh, those are necessary. And we're, we're just watching it happen. It's a combo, 100% a combo. Great question, Antonio. Anybody else have a question? If not, going once, going twice. Oh, one more question. Karsha, do you recommend the coaching for new brokers? 100%. We go through uh, things that all broker owners and team leaders need. And it's in a group setting, remember? So you get to witness and hear what other people are doing as well at different levels. So it's a beautiful thing. That's the reason I did the group setting. Uh, so jump in on that, Karsha. We would love to have you on. Thank you so much, everyone. This is recorded. We'll send everyone the recording. And if you're joining, we'll see you on the other side. Have an awesome Wednesday.